Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. It's your boy Delray Richardson, platinum songwriter, platinum artist. Uh, welcome back to Straight Game TV. I appreciate your time. Thank you for tuning in. Hit the like button, hit the share button, uh, and, and hit the bell for the notification so that you can be uh, first on point to check out this new uh, uh, information and this good game that I'm dropping to you. Um, yo, the questions have been pouring in, and, and this question right here. I uh, came from one of the people who who look at my videos and they said they asked me um do I think that Tupac understood that he had more power than Suge Knight when it came to his situation and being released from jail and actually recording under death row and the answer to that question is yes and no um when Tupac was released from jail I don't think he understood that and if he did he played it real low and was real humble about the situation. Um, but as time went on, after he released All Eyes on Me, and things, you know, money started to be made, uh, you know, records started to sell, you know, you got the number one record in the country, or should I say in the world at that particular time, um, I think things became more visible to him, and, you know, once he seen what he needed to see, he then began to uh, uh, maneuver uh, to... Um, remove himself from the situation and i'm gonna give it to you like this so remember when tupac died um and and his mom had filed the lawsuit there was a uh, an accusation so that i said an accusation made in court basically death row said that death row suge knight and david kenningham said that tupac owed seven million dollars and he was in debt to death row he owed actually owed death row money and i'm here to tell you um that when you understand the power that Tupac had that I think he came to realize that he had, you know, Tupac, like his mother, when she filed a lawsuit, would have been given the same thing that his mother uh, was given after Tupac died. Now, I'm going to tell you this. So when Tupac died in uh, it was in uh, November, the November 1st of 1996, um, uh, they had a meeting um and, and they basically drew paperwork up um, because Tupac's mom had basically um, filed a cease and desist once again that they couldn't release the Machiavelli album, right? So now, when Tupac died, his mother, Rafini, was supposed to meet up with Suge shortly after that, in which she said she had a conversation with him. They were going to meet up and, you know you know, get this situation handled and so on and so forth. So Afeni and her attorney, they waiting on this particular day for Suge to show up. So Suge doesn't show up to the meeting. And, you know, Afeni said she had told her attorney, like, well, damn, you know, I thought, you know, he said he was going to show up, but he didn't show up, right? Why didn't he show up? The reason why Suge Knight didn't show up to that meeting is because he didn't have the, uh, legal reason to show up he didn't have the uh contractual fortitude should i say to show up he didn't have the law on his side or the ability to show up because he didn't have the contract that he would needed to display to Afeni and her attorney that would give him the rights to the things that he said that he had the rights to now so at that particular time suge was free and he could have showed up so on November 1st, 1996, uh, uh, there was a meeting held and there was papers drawn up uh, between Tupac Shakur's mother, uh, her attorney, and, a, and Interscope uh, co-founder Jimmy Iovine, and a group of attorneys. Uh, Death Row wasn't there. No representative from Death Row was there. Suge was in jail at the time for that probation violation. And um, even... Uh, David Kenner, who Tupac had signed that piece of paper getting out of jail, saying that Suge Knight was his manager and David Kenner was his attorney. David Kenner didn't even show up. Why? Because for everybody who said that, 
you know, Tupac didn't fire David Kenner. Uh, Mr. Ogletree, from David Kenner's own mouth, Mr. Ogletree was Tupac's new attorney. Tupac had fired David Kenner. And this is from David Kenner's mouth. So people who've been running around saying things that they had no knowledge of, right, now need to stand corrected. And once again, do your due diligence and not just say stuff just to have something to say. You know what I mean? I, you know, I, I never want to be that guy who just want to say something just to have something to say. I wanted to be back by facts. And in fact, um, during the meeting that they had, uh, the, the attorneys actually pledged uh, an additional $2 million uh, to the $3 million non-refundable to Tupac's mother after he died at this uh, particular meeting uh, uh, to be paid before April and help negotiate and upgrade the royalty rate from 12 to 18 percent paid to her son for past releases. So they were basically um, going to up the royalty rate from that 12 from his original contract to the 18 percent which you know the deal memo stated because jimmy Iovine was aware of everything that happened and basically afini was sticking to her guns in regards to that and um once again this is the power remember that seven million dollars that i told you that death row said that tupac had owed tupac didn't owe no seven million dollars uh the estimate that came out you know from the forensic accountants and the people that they had on board uh, was for a point a nine million dollars in debt and and a uh, uh, attorney basically insists uh that and interscope act attorneys forgave 50 percent of the 4.9 million dollars uh and it was a point which death row adamantly disagrees so now power move listen remember i told you jimmy Iovine had the power of attorney it didn't matter what death row disagreed with. Jimmy Iovine was the man with the power. He had the power attorney. None of that other stuff meant anything. So they basically forgave the four point a uh, fifty percent of the four point nine million dollars that they said that Tupac was in debt. Tupac didn't owe no seven million dollars. And Tupac really truthfully honestly wasn't in debt. It was basically the cost that you normally incur when you are an artist they paying for videos and things like that and the things that they could allocate that you know he was on the hook for cool that's all good so then once you tally up the the record sales because in that year tupac had sold 60 million dollars worth of music so do i think that tupac understood uh, uh the power that he had uh over uh, his situation with death row and he had more power in involving his situation than Suge Knight did. Now check this out. You notice how Suge used to hang out with Tupac and they was real, real tight, right? Suge knew that Tupac had the power and Tupac. I think he knew, but Tupac was basically playing the role that he needed to play in order to what pay the bail money back, sell these records, get these three albums done because the three albums he did not owe to death row those three albums he owed he owed to interscope you get it so now once again i'll say it to you like this i don't think tupac realized when he got out of jail or he wasn't really concerned about that he was concerned with fulfilling uh, uh his obligations and he knew with the the work ethic that he had and in, in, in the focus that he had, he knew that everything else would take care of itself as it always has. Just like him getting out of jail. Once again, Tupac got out of jail because of his own royalties, of his own worth, of his own value. Like I said, once again, so when you understand that and understand everything else that that, like I said, that came into to play, you know, um, you know, if, if it wasn't for um, Jimmy Iovine, you know, nothing would have happened, you know, basically saying um, it was Jimmy Iovine who took the lead in getting the ball rolling to straighten this mess out. Uh, uh, Tupac's mother's uh, attorney said uh, nothing would have happened if it wasn't for him. Death Row never even came to the table 
to have a discussion. You get it? Why wouldn't you show up? Why wouldn't Suge send a representative to that meeting? He couldn't. Jimmy Iovine said, I got this. Because he knew that death row didn't really have any jurisdiction or power over Tupac's work, over Tupac at all, point blank period. Anybody that's told you anything different from what I just explained to you, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, Tupac's mother in that same meeting and situation uh, had also cast doubts on the validity of the recording contract that Death Row struck with her son on September 16th, 1995. So basically, her lawyer basically said, she said this contract, he said this contract is like, like it's not like anything or any agreement that I've ever seen in my life. It's nothing but toilet paper. This agreement, the agreement, which grants Death Row the right to release as many as four albums, spells out a series of advances and payments promised to Shakur, many of which uh, Fishbine alleges the rapper never received. And that is a fact. Anybody that's telling you anything different does not know what they're talking about. It's plain and simple. Your boy Delray. Straight game.